Hey folks, so just before I crack on with today's video, I've got something of an announcement to make. Now, some of you who have been with this channel for some length of time may remember that we used to have a Discord room associated with this channel. And that Discord room used to uh, get bridged with a Riot slash Matrix room and also an IRC channel. So we had this one room that, uh, that was an amalgamation of basically three different access points and it was quite a lot of fun. We used to have a lot of in-depth uh, conversations, and I used to actually get a lot of my uh, video ideas uh, from the discussions we had in that room. And because today's video effectively comes from a discussion we had in the newly resurrected version of this room, I thought now might be a good opportunity to uh, plug it on the channel. Um, now, those of you that have been following me on Mastodon will probably already know this, but uh, but yeah, there'll be links to the Discord room, the Riot room, and the IRC channel down in the description below if you guys uh, want to join uh, in on the uh, on the conversation. Because basically, one recent conversation we had over the past couple of days is what we all do for backup solutions. And I sort of have a philosophy that is, of course, known to most of you on this channel, that I try and keep things as simple and straightforward as possible for a number of reasons. So I do quite a lot of uh, volunteer work uh, when I'm not making videos about Linux and open source technology. And a lot of that involves uh, red tape and paperwork and bookkeeping and all that kind of stuff. You know, the jobs that no one else really wants to do. So it tends to mean that it's very important that my backup solution works for me in a really important reliable way but also it has to be on a medium of technology that's really quite accessible so if i get hit by a bus or something one day uh, a load of financial records just don't get you know don't don't become inaccessible and uh, and effectively become deleted as a result of me not being able to make them accessible and i also work with uh, people who have uh, an entirely varied uh, degree of, of backgrounds in the tech field i know people who well there are people that i work with who don't even know what the cloud really is uh, and sometimes over-engineered solutions can cause a lot of problems so uh, in a lot of cases when it comes to backing up a lot of the uh, records and stuff um I try and keep it as simple as possible, and I try and use technology that people can easily get their head around. So when it comes to um, things like self-hosted Nextcloud instances or having Nextcloud on a little Raspberry Pi uh, that I can access and, and theoretically could be able to access from anywhere in the world that where I could log into my home network, it, that becomes a little bit of a problem when uh, other people might need to to get involved or it becomes technology um, that really only I am familiar with. Even people that are familiar with Nextcloud aren't really necessarily going to be familiar with the setup of my home network and the particular setup of whatever you know Nextcloud instance that I necessarily have, despite the fact that Nextcloud is a wonderful piece of software and very convenient. Um, and also, of course, uh, there are uh, budgeting issues as well. A lot of uh, organizations I work with, they don't have that much money to spend on things like infrastructure, nor the infrastructure required is particularly complex. And therefore, simple solutions do tend to work rather quite well. So I'm going to talk about a few of the solutions that I use to make sure that uh, my uh, important data is backed up. Uh, and not only am I talking about various of these financial records, but of course me being self-employed, I have to make sure that I keep things like receipts and tax records and all these bookkeeping accounts and so forth uh, because the law requires me to. And um, uh, so therefore uh, I they have to be backed up in the event of a hard uh, drive failure uh, and things like that. So there's a lot to uh, to take into account here, and I'm just going to give you a bit of a brief rundown and an explanation of as to how I do things and uh, and and what my methodology, broadly speaking, is. I'm not going to obviously go into the specifics, and this is just a bit of a casual chat. And feel free to, of course, talk about your solutions down in the comments section below. But um, but like I said, keeping things simple, especially in the realm in which I work, tends to be rather uh, beneficial. Now. When it comes to the most important of important records, I actually do keep printed copies. There's no substitute for that. And and, and when I actually work with organizations, uh, I also make sure that the important people in those organizations have printed copies of those records. That way that they're easy to access, so they're not on some hard drive that might uh, might suffer from bit rot or might get stuck behind you know, you know, someone's desk or something uh, several years from now. It's a very standard way that you can just put into a filing cabinet and broadly forget about. You don't have to worry about keeping the temperature at a reasonable, um, you know, to keeping the temperature reasonable or, or anything like that. Most people are perfectly adept at keeping paper files, regardless of your technical level of expert or level of technical expertise, rather. So when it comes to the most important, and I'm talking largely financial records at this stage, 
you can't beat printed copies. Yes, you could always say, well, your house could burn down, your office could burn down. Statistically, though, in this day and age, it's really not that likely. And if you've got more than one copy that you can actually give to maybe like a chair or secretary of the organization, of, uh, th then that would be most bases covered. Because if two houses simultaneously burn down or two houses burn down, I don't think I know anyone whose house has burnt down. I'm just going to put that out there. I know a few businesses that are burned down. I think a chip shop kind of burned down, maybe, uh, that I remember once. So yeah, like I say, like things get, people use that as an example. And I know it's almost like a standing example for an unexpected uh, scenario and and there is that but uh, but when it comes to just 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 fire on the surface level of it um, yeah like I mean most things today are pretty well protected against against fires I uh, hell these days I don't even like cooking for I'd like deep fat frying you know I'm, I'm like that, that that level of safety conscious I guess anyway so that's the most like essential part of it because you always know where you stand with paper and um, and, and, and that's that but obviously you can't you know and I've got a lot of digital stuff that I keep around as well I keep like logos and stuff for this channel and, and obviously you know printing out my avatar for safekeeping it ain't it ain't exactly going to be um it ain't exactly going to fly in that regard so I do what is the next level up and that's just use one of these things this is a uh, uh external USB hard drive uh, I've got a few of them lying around and basically what I do is when it comes to all my uh, essential files uh, once a month or once whenever I do anything significant with the hard drive I um, I just copy paste and then I change the uh, so basically I've got all my files that I, I intend to back up I don't back up my entire home directory there's just too many files that aren't important or anything like that so all the files that I do intend to keep uh, backed up all the files that I that are important or useful or anything like that they all go into a subfolder into my home folder and then like I say once a month or once or whenever uh, my hard disk drive is is about to go through any kind of process uh, you know, like if I'm reinstalling a a, uh, a a distro or doing any kind of partitioning or or just basically doing anything where the hard drive has any risk whatsoever of um, of of corrupting in any capacity. Yeah, I'll do a backup just before then, just in case. Um, sometimes I even do it before upgrades as well. But of course, I run Manjaro and uh, I make sure to keep my home partition separate from my system partition for added safety, I guess. But um, all in all, uh, yeah, I, uh, I I make sure that it's a personal regular bag. I don't use a script as well. Um, it basically, it, the thing is, because these are important files, I kind of want to keep eyes on it. It's just that I trust myself more than I trust a script, and that might be down to some of my script writing abilities. Or maybe it's because I've seen a significant number of websites that have failed to renew their Let's Encrypt certificate, and some of these websites are actually run by people whose uh, technical expertise is far in advance of mine. So, you know, if, if those people get it wrong from time to time, I'm almost certainly going to get it wrong with my, you know, bodged together script. So it's one of those cases where I'd rather trust myself than, than anything automated, especially when it comes to files that um, I am expected to oversee personally and I'm you know legally responsible for and all that kind of stuff and not to mention of course the amount of work that goes into it now my important files uh, they don't they that's about 15 gigs worth of, of stuff there 15 gigs is really not very much at all so it's a, it is a, it's literally just a matter of copy paste and then I just rename the folder to the date that I backed it up and um, and there you go. It's as simple as that. Um, and uh, and it's what I've been doing now for a good number of years. The more you do it, the more you do these kind of things, the more of a routine you get into it, and the easier it becomes until it becomes practically second nature. So uh, I definitely prefer doing it by hand over doing it uh, with a script or in an automated fashion. Because for all you know, for all you know, a script could fail, uh, and and it might not necessarily necessarily return with an error, and then you could be not backing up for months on end thinking that you are and that to me is a, is, is, a, is a horrifying situation even if I didn't lose any data finding out that you know that I wasn't back being you know wasn't backing up for the last six months would, would, would you know it's, it's nightmare fuel nightmare fuel I tell you so anyway of course hard disk drives are not perfect either so um Every now and then, and, and when I work with organizations, what I'll do is, is uh, organizations, most organizations will have what's called an annual general meeting, an AGM. Uh, and an AGM is when a group of the, 
uh, usually the higher ups or the you know the clerical folks within an organization will get together and they'll talk about the year's business projections for next year all that kind of stuff and usually at that meeting uh, I take uh, the it is an opportunity to burn the most important records for that organization to CDs and it's usually CDs it doesn't necessarily have to be DVDs I have used DVDs before but when we're talking about you know, office records, they tend to be of a very low file size. But I'll burn uh, a CD for every single person who I think is important enough to uh, keep an eye on the information, and I'll just hand it to them. Uh, I won't, you know, it's it's uh, it's, an, it's an offline solution there, but a year's worth of records burnt onto a, onto a CD. Sometimes it'll be the, all the records up until that point, depending on who it is and the organization in question. Uh, now, CDs, of course, can also suffer degradation over time. Now, a lot of this comes into um, play when we're talking about maintaining records, and some organizations are required to keep or, uh, records for a longer period of time if, they're, uh, you know, if they apply for grants and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, they, it's very rare that you'd have to keep records for longer than 10 years. And um, in most cases, I think CDs, uh, I would say, can, can take care of that. And again, in the most important situations, you've got to fall back on the printed backups if you can't fall back on the, on, on the hard drive. So the most important stuff gets backed up three times over the course of a year or over three different mediums. That may sound like a lot of work, but when you layer it into a routine, it's nothing. It's nothing at all. Now... I do cheat a little bit as well because you know me I do like my offline solutions but when it comes to things like tax records where in theory you can go to prison if you screw it up I don't necessarily want to test that theory I'm told that if it's genuine mistakes they tend to sort of take that into account obviously you don't want to take that chance you want to be as responsible as possible so when it comes to the most important documents that I'm legally obliged to maintain they go in an encrypted 7z file and they'll go to a Dropbox uh, folder um, and that is like I say it's cheating it's not actually you kind of using Dropbox because it, again it's it's in an encrypted 7z folder which means technically the only person that could ever get to them is me but um, but it's like it's just in case if like everything burns down and like it's a full gone um, you know like I don't know post-apocalyptic type well I suppose in a post-apocalyptic type scenario Dropbox probably be one of the first to go if we're honest but I don't know it may, it makes me feel a little bit safer and I don't necessarily like cloud solutions but when it comes to offsite backups uh, that's that's effectively something that I do and I know that Dropbox isn't necessary it's not a backup medium it's not supposed to be used as a backup but it's just something that's off-site and there to be stored uh, and I don't access it regularly like I say it tends to go um, tends to get zipped up with not necessarily the monthly backups but usually like an annual backup uh, or or when I can think or when a good opportunity arises uh, to do it outside of then so so that's very simply how I uh, how I store my backups that's my regiment um, it's it probably sounds like there's more to it than there actually is but over time when you embed these kind of things into a routine um, it it uh, becomes like second nature. It really does. It becomes very comfortable. And the most time I spend is on the most important. I suppose not the most time I spend, but you know the most layers of, of backing up happens with the most important of documents. But when it comes to things like you know channel artwork and so forth, uh, most of the time it, it's it's you know here's where it, it it tends to get backed up more over anything else. Um, and that's simply because. Uh, worst comes to the worst I can redo things like channel artwork and and all that kind of stuff as well uh, and I do change the channel artwork every, from time to time as well so uh, so yeah it's only the irreplaceable stuff that tends to get backed up the most so anyway guys I think that's going to be where I leave you today but thank you very much for joining me of course if you are so inclined please feel free to check out the discord riot room irc channel down in the description below and i'll do a video at some point in the future talking a little bit about my thought process behind getting the whole thing up and running again um it's a bit of an interesting story i guess if you're so inclined for that kind of thing but uh uh but yeah i'll uh, i'll catch up with you then thank you very much for watching that's about it from me today and uh until next time i've been chris Ware, and you've been awesome take care now